there's a numbering system with these vertebrae. So it's a letter and then a number. There's five lumbar vertebrae. So we talk about L1 to L5. L you count from the bottom up or the top down? You count from the, from the top down. So L1 would be the uppermost lumbar. L5 would be the bottommost lumbar vertebra. So this is L3. It's the third lumbar vertebra. And I know that just because I count it. Here's the bottom one, five, four, three. Okay. So one thing to observe here is that the body of the vertebra is very, very large. Can you see that? Because there's a lot of weight on that bone. And in fact, if you look at the fifth here, the bottom one, you'll see the body of the vertebra is even larger because there's more weight on that vertebra. So you can kind of think about the bones of the spine being like a pyramid. Right? Large bones at the bottom, smaller bones at the top. Right? Makes sense, right? Okay. Um, Okay, so now if we look at the spinous process, we see here how, if you look at it from the side, you see how it's kind of rectangular or, sha or square shaped? Can you see that? Okay. Um, it's more or less pointing straight back. So what that means is that if we stack up two of these lumbar vertebrae, let's say like that, and remember we've got a disc in between the body, so it's about like that. Because those spinous processes are pointing more or less straight back, that's going to allow for a fair amount of movement in this plane of flexion and extension, back bending and forward bending. Now, obviously, eventually, if I extend it enough, these two spinous processes will start to bump together. But I can get quite a lot of movement there before that happens. When we look at the thoracic spine, we'll see that that's different in the thoracic spine. Um, all right, where were we? Here's L3. So what I wanted to show you was the, um, was the facet joints here. Um, okay. So if we look at these facet joints, can you see how we have one that's oriented inwardly and one that's oriented outwardly? You see that? Okay. So what that orientation allows for is flexion and extension. It allows for the spine to, to, to round and to arch. Okay. But you can see that if I try to rotate these two vertebrae, can you see how those spinous, those um, facet joints, the, the surfaces would just bump into one another very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it limits the rotation. So there's actually very, very little rotation in the, in the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm but fairly free flexion and extension. Okay. Make sense? If we move up to the thoracic spine, so here's a typical thoracic vertebra. I think this guy looks like a, like a giraffe, right? <laughs> no. We see here the body of the vertebra is much smaller. Right? Can you see that? Because there's a lot less weight on that part of the spine. If you look at the spinous process, do you see how it's very differently shaped from the, from the lumbar? You see how the lumbar is more or less square or rectangular shape, pointing straight back? The thoracic spinous process is long, slender, downwardly pointing. You see that? So that if we align these vertebra, we can see that those spinous processes overlap one another like the like the shingles on a roof. And you could see then that if you wanted to extend the thoracic spine, if you wanted to back bend, what you're going to see is that very, very quickly, you're going to bump those spinous processes into one another. So it's going to restrict the ability to extend or to back bend that part of the spine. Now, you can flex to some degree, but remember, you have all of these ribs that attach to the thoracic spine. And most of the ribs attach with cartilage here to the sternum or the breastbone in the front. The upper 10 ribs all attach to the sternum. So although these ribs can move and the cartilage can bend to allow for breathing and side bending and twisting and so forth, it limits the amount of flexion. You have this relatively rigid 
rib cage sitting in front of the thoracic spine. But if you look at the facet joints, do you see how one is oriented facing backwards and one uh, facing backwards here, and one is oriented facing forward? You see, you see that? So that actually allows for a fair amount of rotation to take place. So very little rotation in the lumbar spine, but fairly free rotation in the thoracic spine. The ribs can twist, the cartilage can bend. Right? The cartilage can kind of twist as we twist the rib cage. So there's a pretty fair amount of rotation that's possible there.